But okay, but we'll get on to our next next slide. And um, I've started some of these because they are things that I have spoken about in the previous section, so I'm going to tend to just gloss over these. Uh, for this one, I just really wanted to remind you the personal boundary, exploring that idea for yourself, sort of like thinking your way through that process of like, what what do I control 100%? And what don't I control 100% is just a super healthy thing to do because I think that you will find when you think, when, when you give yourself a little bit of space and freedom to really meditate on that, you'll realize that almost every time, everything that makes you feel bad, everything that causes you anxiety, everything that causes you stress is going to be you trying to control something that you don't control. That that is at the root of that feeling in humans. So. Keep that in mind. The next slide. Um, get to a place where you decide what it is that you want to change in your life. And I also put or not, because I think there's a huge amount of power in throwing away old ideas that you might have about yourself when you realize that you aren't going to do it. That I, I was trained as an illustrator, and I had this thing, and it was just an identity that floated around in my brain about being a comic book artist. And it just, it was operative in my life for about two years. That was something I was really pursuing. But then things happened, and I just stopped pursuing that. But I started to realize that still was in my brain. And I was concerned about not being a published comic book author. And it just, and I had no intention of doing it. I mean, it would require me getting back into an entirely different discipline and approaching something that I have just no intention of doing. And once I realized that, that freed this tremendous amount of psychological space inside of me because you need the energy for the things that you are going to do. So if there are things like you always wanted to, I don't know, ride a bike across the Great Wall of China and you come to a place where you say, like, you know what, I have no intention of doing that then get it out of your brain. And, uh, and keep, keep that sort of relationship always clear in your brain. And you, you get to decide. You know, you, nobody else gets to tell you what you think is important. You, you say, this is important, this is not important. And you'll give yourself, again, a lot of freedom. Okay. I love this concept of reality. Um, reality is extraordinarily different from facts or physics that there is a wall here, that, that's a fact, but that isn't reality. Reality is what our, we process, is how we interpret the universe. And when I came to this real, I didn't come to this realization, I read it, and I was like, whoa, that's really cool. That, 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 that there is, we don't share an objective reality. We see the same thing, we aren't seeing the same thing. There's a whole lot of processing going on in the back of our heads about where, how we were raised, what we value certain things, that, that causes it to be like literally impossible for us to see the same thing. We can't experience the same subjective reality. We project our past thoughts, opinions onto reality. And when I saw this, I mean, the, 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 the psychologist, the psychiatrist is basically saying that reality is projection. He actually goes that far. He says, well, there's just no, there isn't a thing called reality. All there is is the projections we place on reality. Why is this an important thing to sort of wrap our heads around? It's because we literally create our reality all day long. And that's a good thing, and it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing if we just sort of go on autopilot and sort of allow our reality to be kind of a negative place. But it's awesome when you sort of realize that even though it's not easy and it's not, you know, it's not something you can just snap your finger and do, but if you have, if you have a self-belief that's a negative self-belief, that's what it is. It is a belief. It's something that you can actually sit down either with a professional or by yourself, and just work through it. Kind of like, you know what? This has to go. It has to go away. And however long it takes for me to get rid of this idea, I'm going to do it. And you can do it. That I've seen, I've done it for myself. I've seen other people. I, was, I, I have a small example I've used before, which was a long period of my life, I was in debt. I was in a lot of debt. 
And my vision of reality was that people carry debt. It just, to whatever degree, you know, you carry a little bit of debt, you carry a lot of debt. But that it was just unrealistic to think you wouldn't have debt. And then one, and I got into a lot of it, and I realized I can't get rid of this. And through that process, I started to realize, like, wait a second, I can actually live in a world where debt isn't an option. I can create that universe. And when I, once I did that, I was free of a very bad demon. And it's a demon that said, you can buy things that you haven't earned the money for. That's a bad idea. But that's a, that's a tiny example, and, and it, that may seem facile, but I can't explain enough. That was real. I, I, my ability to approach the reduction of the debt was very much affected by my belief that even at the end of it, I would still have some. And it was just, an, it's just, it was a bad belief. I smoked for a long time. And believe me, I believed I was a person who smoked. I mean, it wasn't just like a thing I did. It was all a part of me. It was my reality. I was a person who smoked. And the quitting part wasn't just getting rid of cigarettes. It was getting rid of all these embedded ideas of what it meant to have a cup of coffee in the morning, having a beer, eating food. There was just... It was just a tightly woven reality I create, created for myself. So just be aware that this is going to help a lot if you can embrace this idea. Because pretty much, if, if it's not something you like, you can pretty much find a way to make it better. And let's see. I, do, I like this idea of you having permission. You, seriously, you own you. It is all you. That you don't, other people don't, do, do not, as much as they love you, as much as they want to help you, they can't understand what your needs are. So it's just really important that you, you draw the line in the sand for yourself. Realize that you can't make other people care. When I'm writing a book, believe me, nobody in my life cares that I'm writing a book. This is not part of their life. They just don't, you know. Just, my father plays golf. I don't, I don't play golf. I like it when he plays golf, but I don't care. I'm just like, hey, good luck, have a good day. And so just, you know, that it's, it's sort of an empowering thing when you realize that. The only person you have to worry about is you, because once you've got you taken care of, everything else is going to fall into place. Okay. I, this concept of ecosystem, I think it's really important. You can be a positive you want to be. If you're surrounded by a bunch of just negative, Eeyore-type people who are just like, man, nothing, everything sucks, even if they aren't directing it at you, it just gets into you. You just, you know, it's just impossible to escape it. And it'll affect you. It'll be like, you know, you'll be like in a really great mood, and all of a sudden it's like, why am I in a terrible mood? Like nothing has changed, but then you realize you just had lunch with Sally, and Sally's always a bummer. But just keep that concept in mind, that your whole life, I, I find that if I, when I don't clean my apartment, that it, it starts to affect me. Like I become as sloppy as my environment. And that's just something that, that, but that's me. It's different for different people. But just keep that in mind. That con like emotions are contagious. People who are sad will make you sad. People who are happy will make you happy. And the, I don't necessarily mean that you've got to cut everybody out, but you really do need to have an awareness of your environment because it'll start to affect you and you won't know what's happening. Be, oh, well, but that's, so keep that in mind. Uh, and I, I address this later, but also just do what you need to do. Things that you have to take care of, like bills and food and whatever, just take care of it. If you, just make sure that you've got a plan. I have some friends who just, they pay bills kind of like whenever they remember to pay bills. And they're in a constant state of stress. They're like, oh, whoa, oh, you pay the electricity bill. And it's like, you pay from the 1st to the 15th of the month. You looked at what you owe and you send a check off. And, and it's like, the, the brain's gonna handle it. I was like, oh, you're a crazy man. And, and it's just, but I, but I know what that's like. I, I, met, what I, I met like a person who did my nails and she said that she don't have credit cards because she forgot to pay them. And then the credit gets affected. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was funny, I never heard that. Like she forgot, she it, don't use it because she said she forgot to pay it. So she just don't use it. I've I known people that, would blow your mind for how crazy they are. But, so that's just, I just, but again, to keep this in mind, that you, you've got an ecosystem, you created. Make sure it's a good one. Do what you can to keep it clean, okay? 
Uh, let's go back to what I was saying before. The belief is your number one challenge. This concept, it's the combination of belief and desire that you just, you need to want whatever it is that's in front of you. Because otherwise, I think it leads to this, this sort of fooling yourself thing, like, oh, I'm going to do it. And I've known people like, public speaking can be really this nightmare for people. And there's, there's ways to approach it. And one way would be like, oh, they're going to they're gonna hate me. And oh, I still got to do it because they'll fire me if I don't do it. But then you get up and you do it. And it's just, you pre-fail because you just have already convinced yourself that, you know, you, there's no way you can succeed. And, and that's, I, it's, a, it's sad to watch. It's just really very sad to watch. I, I, I do like this example of, of apocalyptic thinking, which is just this idea that, Literally, for as long as we as human beings have records, we believe the world is going to end within a few weeks. For, for 4,800 years, there's recorded documentation that, that we persist in that belief. And the further away we get, I think you would think it would have an effect, but it just doesn't have an effect on anybody. It just blows my mind. But Nothing is diminishing this. It just it stays with us as a culture. It won't go away. But if, if people can believe that, like why can't they believe they can lose ten pounds? It, it just blows my mind. They just have a hard time. So like they, we can believe unbelievable things, but when it comes to pretty easy things for us to take care of, we're like, oh, wait, we can't possibly do that. So I just want you to be aware that this is you get to determine your belief level in pretty much anything. Okay, um, transition to anxiety. This goes back to what I, when I mentioned that, that sort of fear coming up to that point of uh, commitment. That, that's sort of what this is. It's this, no matter what we're talking about here, if you're, I want to save an extra hundred bucks a month or I want to lose weight, I want to, I want to start a new business. It really doesn't matter what it is. You're moving from a state when you aren't that to a state where you are that. And that is a transition. That is something that just, we as people have a challenge with that. And the discomfort can really sabotage your effort. So I really want you to be just aware of it. It's probably going to happen. You will get uncomfortable if you're trying to go from a now state to a future state. And you just have to sort of work your way through that, just kind of realize that you know, there's, there are no rules. The rules are pretty much up to you. Like, when it comes to your head, you get to make all these rules. And if you start to feel anxiety, make sure that make sure you aren't doing something stupid, like you know, I don't know, cutting your leg off or something like that. It's probably not a good idea. But uh, if, if what you're doing is positive and it's going to bring you good benefits, then you, you need to be able to say to yourself, okay, it's okay for me to work through this this discomfort because that's you that. Discomfort triggers to warn us against danger, but this is just an example of how our psycho our psychology starts to take instinct and turn it into thought. And it's, it's never good. Okay, next slide. Embrace paradox. This is something that uh, the more I get into this, the more clear this is becoming. Which is, again, things aren't binary. And not only aren't they binary, but they tend to really live in opposite, like truth exists in two different places and they tend to be the opposite of one another. And the, the, this example, we're both animals and we're humans. They're both truths, but they're kind of opposing concepts. One, one we, we, we put a lot of emphasis on this concept of being driven by, by animal instinct and desire. And the other is sort of like this loftier state of the elevated man. These are both true statements, and both of those states exist within us, and they are oppositional states, but they, they're there. So don't look at it and say, well, this freaks me out. Look at it and kind of go, well, how can I use this paradox to my advantage? People who are really like stuck in this need to be right. Political conversation, particularly modern political conversation, is almost exclusively in the realm of right and wrong. There's very little thought, and there's very little paradox in what people are saying. And when 
when people say things that do not possess some form of paradox, that should be like a trigger for you. You should think, oh, that doesn't sound like a very good thinking going on right there. Because we, uh, one of the key, I'm, I'm hesitating a bit because I, it's, it's my own personal weakness. I always hate to sort of bring my complete lack of moral fiber to the table. But I've got, I've got things I have to do during the week. But I'm clearly a sloppy and lazy human being. I love to just drool and watch like Law and Order. It just makes me happy. Eat a candy bar, rub my stomach, oh, that's so great. Even though I should be writing my book and maybe exercising and doing whatever else. That's just a reality with me. Uh, there are people who, who have commented on my work ethic and just said, like, I can't believe how insane you are. You're like a machine, a crazy machine. And I know for a fact that simultaneously when people have that perception of me, I, just, I, I, I struggle to like put my shoes on. Like, oh, I don't know, man. That seems like a lot of effort to put the shoes on today. <laughs> Couch is like, like three, three feet away. I mean, just chill out. But that is a, that is a paradox I've come to embrace in myself. I can be amazingly disciplined. And I can be unbelievably undisciplined. And I just need to be. And, and I don't beat myself up. I don't sit around like, oh, you're bad. I just go like, oh, you've been a little undisciplined. You need to get back to being a little disciplined. Because. I'm going to be one or the other on any given day. Okay. Uh, this intention versus suffering is what I discussed before, which is intention is when you say you're going to do something and you do it, and suffering is when you want something else to happen that you can't affect. So it's like, I want this guy to be nice to me. I want my boss to give me a raise. All of that stuff is suffering. And that you just need to be able to sit back and feel like, well, in the context of I want to raise, there's a lot of stuff you do control, and you have to negotiate your way up to it. But when it comes down to the decision point of you getting the raise or not getting the raise, that's not your decision. It's somebody else's decision. So that's where you, when you come to make choices in your life, be conscious of intention. That, 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 that all that means is that you're doing everything within your control to affect the outcome that you want to have happen, but that you don't let yourself get all crazy in believing that just because you're doing what you're supposed to do, that you affect that outcome. You're doing what you can to affect it, but you don't control it. So keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, this, I, I always like this slide. I, I won't go through it, but it's a good thing to read through. It was just something I found on our website that just went through statements about using should and seeing how they, these were all suffering statements using the term should. Oh, I, I actually, I, I didn't know no, that was cool. I, I, I mentioned that. The word should, in your own vocabulary, be conscious of its existence. Anytime you use it, you're moving in a suffering posture. Like, this should happen, that should happen. Just get the word out of your vocabulary. It doesn't help you. Should is just a, it's a weasel word. It's something that is, instead of saying, I will do something, or I won't do something, I, I should do that. I should stop sniffing airplane glue. Yeah. Uh, honesty and authenticity. This is something that is, uh, this, this has as much to do with dealing with other people as it does with yourself. Being honest with yourself is a complicated thing because we don't like seeing ourselves. We, we do things. We are just, again, we have, a, we have a vision of ourselves that's kind of slightly off kilter to what we actually are. So being able to make changes in ourselves requires this honest, this sense of honesty where you're like, you know what, I just, it's more important to me to get the thing I want than to persist in whatever kind of picture I have of myself. Another characteristic of this, and Herman Edwards is a football coach, and he just said this, he said, be on time. And I was like, wow, that's a really, to him, that's just a little, mnemonic thing, which he just says that if you, if you can't do that, if you, if you cannot be a person who says I'm going to be there at a certain time and be on time, you got more problems than just timeliness. You just, you are incapable of sort of managing your life. So I think that's a great thing to kind of keep on your head, is that being on time is absolutely in your control. The number of times you have flat tires and engines blowing up, pretty minimal. And people will come to realize that you are either the kind of person who's on time or not. Um, character is just, it's, it's, a, it's all of these things put together, but 
the better your character, the more likely you are to succeed because you are going to be able to be honest with yourself and you're going to be able to honest with other people. Um, honesty also helps being able to create effective goals. But, uh, ineffective goals are things like, I'm going to lose 60 pounds in two weeks. That's just a, that's, it's, it's, it's a useless goal. You, you can't make it happen. But you're, and you're also not being honest with yourself when you make a goal like that, because you know, you're not going to succeed at it. It might be a great you know, lofty goal, but you'd be dead in the process. Mm -hmm. So being, uh, uh, being honest helps you create effective goals, and it also helps you succeed at your goals, because it lets you be honest when you fail, when you hit failure. You kind of, instead of going, like, oh, I just want to keep the failure away from me, it makes me look like a bad person, you just, you just belly up to the failure and, and dissect it for all the things that it's useful for. Because any time, again, anything that, it, it, that you can effectively call a failure, in it is the seed of, a, of an equal or greater success. So always keep that in mind. Okay.